You are listening to Chasing Threads. Two friends exploring fashion, culture, and everything in between. Where we unravel fashion history, fashion nuance, our favorite fashion icons, and pull the threads that tie them all together. So I am Diamond, and I describe myself as bohemian chic. And the quickest way to my heart is a compliment, a good meal, and a long, flowy dress. And I'm Chance. I grew up making dresses out of my mama's curtains and living vicariously through Vogue before I escaped to fashion school. So Chance, here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Diamond, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's chase these threads. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hello, everyone. Ooh, How are you guys are, doing? We are back. Back, 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 back. <laughs> and, you know, if there's one thing about Chasing Threads, it's we're going to be here and we're going to be on it and you won't see us again for three months. <laughs> but when we come back, it'll be the best hour of your life. Right. We're going to give you the tea about what's <laughs> going on in these streets. <laughs> I am so excited to be back. I feel like I say this every time, but... I get nervous that we're going to record because I'm like, I'm not going to be up to diamond standards. And then we start and I'm like, oh, this is the easiest oh, thing child. I've ever done. It's oh, just child. natural. I'm tired of that from you. <laughs> <laughs> you be You're ready. Like, I don't want to hear that next episode. Keep that out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. So you, we have tons of new stuff in our life. So oh, you... Yeah. You have moved to Seattle. I have recently relocated to the West Coast. I'm a Pacific Northwest girl now, which is Ah. so exciting. (laughs) Um, I am loving it. It has, I feel like living in Seattle has healed me, healed my little gay Southern soul, queer Southern soul, I should say. Um, There's just, there's so many queer people up here and the nature is gorgeous and I'm in a job where I'm like fashion adjacent again. So I'm happy oh. to be helping people like style throughout the day. So I, I'm doing great. Tell me about oh how God. you've been since we saw each other, Diamond. I, well, since we saw each other, I am a GLAAD award winner. Oh, <laughs> let's get the clap soundtrack. Come on. Hey. <laughs> so I'm a GLAAD award winner. I have um done um some films and some documentaries that i was a part of that have won glads and so exciting so that's exciting i have been to wait but hold on let's let's live in that moment for a minute let's not just move (laughs) right past that like that's such a small thing are you in your mind are you like yeah of course i'm a glad award winner are you or are you like oh my god like what (laughs) What are we feeling about the GLAAD Award? I don't know. It didn't feel like anything. It felt like <laughs> I was up because you said it I was, was a, a Wednesday. <laughs> That's what it kind of felt like because we the, basically I was a part of a documentary last mm-hmm. summer, and um, it was the to be pride to be seen documentary on the soul of a nation Mm -hmm. and they were featuring multiple people and i was just one of the people and i've done similar things like this but this was like oh this was like a disney production like literally disney um abc disney and so it was really professional and it just went and it was lovely and then it it they posted it on hulu and it was dope. And so I didn't yeah. think about it, but I didn't think about the award cycle. Mm-hmm. And then boom, we won it in long form journalism. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm a part of this. Yeah. And I never thought that, you know, you know, I would be in something like that like, yeah. in my brain. Um, but I'm excited about it. I don't know. I, I, my rate has gone up. <laughs> I, it better. It absolutely better have. Has it ignited the flame in you? Are you working towards EGOT now? Are we going to see a Diamond Styles EGOT in the next 15 years? I'm working years? towards, I'm always working towards being a creative that share, um, you know, queer experience, Black queer experience, mm-hmm. Black women mm-hmm. experience, Black trans women experience, um, queer love just all the things that I that I appreciate about the LGBT culture um, in a diverse way. I, mm-hmm. I'm always going to be striving for that. I am not somebody who is going to shuck and jive and coon <laughs> for, you know, opportunities. So sometimes yeah. that closes door in my face as well. I'm also not a code switcher. I'm also mm-hmm. not a, there's just certain things I'm not going to do yeah. for opportunities. So I'm just, I'm just blessed when they come to me. Um, 
but if I if I get the money to do stuff that I envision, then I'm gonna do it. And yeah. and I haven't had a situation where I created something that people were like, oh my God, this is dope. This has never been done. I try to be yeah. cutting edge on mm-hmm. things that I've never seen before. I don't try to do things that um, you know, just mimic other people's stuff. I try to do what I want um yeah. in a way that is um groundbreaking and also highlighting the people that I love, which is the queer culture, queer people. Yeah. I love That's that. Right. You ever since I've known you, your whole vibe has been I'm going to make spaces for people and then I'm going to pull them up with me. And that you know, is what is in so everything that I do. To me. In everything you do, <laughs> from day to day to big picture, and to yeah. see you be, you know, not that you need recognition for that, but when it comes, it's like this bit we been new. But I, I love yeah. to see the the flowers and the anointment just coming down. I love, thank you. Because, you know, you met me in at, in retail work. Mm-hmm. And, and prior to you coming there, you know, you came there and I was the store manager at, mm-hmm. uh, we were working at Bath and Body Works. Mm-hmm. And Back and Body my, Hurts. <laughs> Back and Body Hurts, yes. <laughs> and we, in there, when I came to that store, it was ran by a uh, white woman. Mm-hmm. It was um, the co- person was a white latinx person Mm -hmm. um most of the people except for maybe one or two were most of people were white Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so what i said when i become the leader of this shit i'm gonna have a array of people so by the time i left it was six queer people that worked there (laughs) three trans people i had a gay white co-manager I had a you it was I had changed the whole structure. You and said this is for the girls and the gays. Honey, <laughs> right. We had um Christina, she was v, um of Asian. Uh-huh. We had Latinx, we had African, we had you get what I'm saying, we had so diverse of people. I yeah. wanted people who spoke different languages. I wanted diversity. And it turned up. And because, it makes sense because we were in one of the most diverse cities in the country. And boom. you did not only were you reflecting that, but you were also helping your community. It's just like your mind is here, yeah. it's there. You're doing this, you're doing exactly. that. <laughs> and I'm I'm proud of that. People don't know it. I just know I know it. But yeah. um, but I'm proud of that in everything that I do, whether it be my forward facing activism. I, I do it wherever I'm working, even if it's like retail. I just, yeah. I live the politics that I talk about. And yeah. I think that's important to me for my own sanity and my own um, moral compass. And so when I get acknowledged by my own people, I appreciate it. I don't yeah. take it for granted. So that's yeah. exciting because a lot of people don't get it. So I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy about that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, thank you. speaking of GLAAD award winning, mm-hmm. um, are you, did you go to, the, are you on your way to the Renaissance tour? Did you book tickets? Are we seeing Mother B? You are not going to see Diamond at a Mother B <laughs> concert. You are not going to see Diamond at any concert because Diamond doesn't like crowds of people. And yeah, Diamond I'm a doesn't too old like myself. that part. And also, Diamond is a musical connoisseur. I love music. I love singing. I love performing. I hate going to concerts and hearing the crowd sing the songs instead mm-hmm. of the artist. Yeah. It annoys me when I see video of the artist singing a song and they take the mic and hang it to the crowd. I didn't <laughs> pay for this. I pay for you. I don't want to hear them talk. Get the fuck, oh put God. that mic back, back <laughs> down your throat and give me <laughs> the vocals. I'm that person. I don't want, I don't like the experience. I don't like, like I, now I can deal with a small intimate setting. Like I yeah. went to see um, Emily King at the um, White Oak um, Music Hall here in Houston. Uh, I love White Oak Music Hall. Yes, it it's was, such it a was good venue. smaller, but it was, a you know, mm-hmm. it, and so it just felt different and it felt comfortable yeah. and she wasn't in the crowd wasn't annoying yeah. but i can tell that if i go by what i see i'm not gonna like what's happening in this experience yeah. and so no I especially spending videos. that much money on something i'm not gonna like that part i <laughs> people who keep spending so much money and then i keep seeing twitter videos of like queens and they's in the audience like facing the audience giving their own beyonce and it's like 
if you don't sit down and turn around, <laughs> like what, I'm not here to watch you. Like, what do you think you're doing? Yes. Um, so yeah, I don't know that I, well, I, that's a lot. I wish I was there. The Renaissance album, I know everyone has talked about it, but quickly, yeah. it is what has made me like a, a true Beyonce fan, I think. Like it is just, mm. God, I love it so, I mean, I've always liked Beyonce. I love Beyonce after Renaissance. There's just something I, I always have this conversation with my husband. I listen to the album and I get emotional sometimes because I'm like the largest pop oh, star. You got the- married. We oh, forgot to say you got married. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I got married. We talked about it a little. Oh, it was before. No, I got married it was last before time. you got married. It yes. was before. Um <laughs> No, you're a married true. woman now. I'm married. Yeah. It feels absolutely no different, except I get to say husband now. Because <laughs> y'all been um, together for so damn long. We've been together forever. And it's funny, like the whole, oh, I get to say husband now. And then we move up here to this super liberal city and everyone says partner. Even cis straight people are like, my partner. And I'm like, I or I earned husband and I will be saying husband. Okay. okay no, okay, and that's well. that. <laughs> Anyway, so it, I just, it, it, the Renaissance album makes me emotional sometimes because Beyonce is the hugest artist in the world. And to have her uplifting queer, specifically black, trans, femme, like voices and just stuff that she has incorporated into Renaissance is so special that she has done this. And also, not to mention the music to me, slaps like it's the most elevated I think she's ever been. Um, again, that that's kind of a big statement because I'm not a huge, huge, I wasn't a huge Beyonce fan before, so maybe ignore that part. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just love it. And it has been a huge, it has been really special to me. And the fashion uh, aspect that is, is what I really want to get to. Yes, that has she been. She is the... serving puss, cunt, yes. mother. Like she's giving. Oh. I, what's your experience with the fashions? What are you thinking overall? So I'm loving it. I'm loving that. You know, what What people may not know is that, you know, she had some knee surgery. And so she can't do all of the choreography that she used yeah. to do. Because, bitch, honey, we 42, honey. <laughs> <laughs> we, her birthday is what? Like tomorrow? Wait, what's today? Oh, it's yeah, a couple of in- days. Um, her birthday is tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. <laughs> September the 4th and so you know well, she's 42 baby we're the same age and yeah. so she's she's coming into you know we're coming into our bodies our grown woman bodies <laughs> and so um, you know so she I think she has took that into consideration so I can't give all these choreography shit but I can't give y'all a motherfucking look because I yeah, am a serve you a look. and yeah. so she has gotten these amazing designers that are creating these amazing things and it's just beautiful it has been yeah. beautiful since the beginning since her European leg and now that she's in her USA leg of the tour it is just amazing I especially I do feel like she the Virgo energy has truly overtaken her because the past couple of shows, the looks have been like out of this world to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've all been good, like you said, since the beginning, but she has really stepped up the like, <laughs> pardon the word, but it looks like a faggot is dressing her. Like in this past, this most recent <laughs> outfit, it's like, yes. this is so good. Drag, so drag. Yes, so drag. And to see Beyonce doing like that level of drag, it's like, this is a moment. She is shaking the table. Mm-hmm. I really, about- I think my favorite, my favorite one. I don't know what date this was, but there was a really soft pink where she had a veil kind of thing hanging mm-hmm. down, and it was sparkly. That has been yep. my favorite. That is like, oh my god. Um, I do also I like find the that. ones. She did the one like blue. literally the past two days. Did you say the boots? The blue. Oh. Girl, the boots. Like Have a, you seen the little Kiki boots that she wore recently? Mm-mm. Is it the um, Mason Margiela? <laughs> I think it might be. Oh, of course I can't find it. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I like I said, I have really been liking her more recent looks. The the and the beginning of the tour ones with a really sparkly. I just she's the creative direction this tour. Not that it isn't always insane with Beyonce but she has really gone and beyond with this Mm -hmm. one I believe with the fashions and just making sure everything is true to the tone of the album that she created also 
not just Beyonce's fashion. So she's killing it. The people who are act, you know, of course, there's always going to be people who look a mess, but the people who <laughs> don't look a mess. Yes. The people who are actually putting thought into their outfits to go see mm-hmm. her. That has yep. been, a, I think that's a unique thing about where our culture is right now. We're yep. literally seeing, they're making a moment. Everybody mm-hmm. from celebrities, I just saw Gail King as yep. uh, uh, OG auntie. Meghan um, Markle was there the other day. Right. And they're p- going shopping, showing you their experience of picking what outfit, picking what dress. And yeah. then to see the kids actually dressing up to go in their silver, in their metallics, in 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 what they're wearing to go see her. We are and we're actually they're recording it for social media. Yeah. That is something that artists in the past, we didn't because of where we're living at mm-hmm. right now yeah. in, in technology. We didn't get to see that in the past. We didn't. Yeah. Like to say Michael Jackson, we didn't, we don't know what people, how people went through the process of wearing whatever they were going to wear to yeah, go see sure. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Well, of course, we saw Michael Jackson's outfits, but the people actually preparing to go to yeah. um, his shows. And so I love that we're being able to see that for her show and how people are killing it. Of course, we see the people who are a mess, but the people who are killing it. (laughs) Yeah, the people that are killing it it make it worth it. And then the videos where Beyonce herself is seeing certain people in the crowd Uh and will call it out. It's like, can you imagine being like, putting all this thought in this outfit and then she literally sees it and makes a comment about it. Like I would. Yes. I, 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 what, what else do, do yeah. we live for? <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Beyonce noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I don't really remember a culture around, especially as far as on social media around people getting, getting dressed for tours like this. I know when like I was in high school with Lady Gaga, people made a huge deal of what they would wear to the monster ball to try to look uh-huh. like little monsters. But the the social media part of it and the way that it's taking on its own culture is so specific yes. to this tour and to Beyonce. Yes. And it is really exciting to see I because it. It, even when you think about Beyonce, this is going to become a Beyonce fan album now, but <laughs> even when you think about like self-titled and Lemonade, she consistently does these things that take a new form of technology or a new media rather mm-hmm. and breaks it open and yeah. it's just so exciting to think like what is she going to keep doing because yeah. every out every cycle every era there's something like that mm-hmm. so yeah and and even the little cute little thing um look around everybody on you yeah that whole the cities are are competing on who can be mm-hmm. silent it's yeah. this little moment i've freaking that is so ingenious and yeah. and i don't think that that's something that's planned that's something that the culture just created for sure and so i think that's i think that's just dope i think that that's why to me you know i know this is controversial and start people <laughs> you know arguing and battling she is mm-hmm. the michael jackson of our time she is the yeah. beyonce she is beyonce like she's even yeah. her own but if i was going to compare to some her to somebody in the in the past she is the michael jackson of our time yeah, I agree. I just don't think anybody is on that level, right. like even close, to be honest. No. Like, I don't really think she even has peers. So, and that's yeah. that's so cool to see. <laughs> yeah, contemporaries. Um, yeah, I, I stand. I have to stand. Uh yes. We've been gone for a minute. Now we're back with the jump off. Mm-hmm. So, Chance, can you tell everybody what a trinket is? Of course, I can remind you guys. I mean, I'm sure you remember because it's typically one of our like funniest moments of each podcast, but let me remind you just in case you're new here. So, our trinket is when we take a little bitty thing in fashion, a, a little a little a mouche bouche if you will, a little tiny thing and we expand on it a little bit. Something you think Oh, that's the part of thing. That's something that's always been there. I've never really given it much thought. Well, guess what? Diamond is about to school your ass. You might have <laughs> never thought about it, but she's about to give you a, a history on it. And I'm so excited for this one because it is a uh, harbinger for the for the crazy things we're going to talk about in this week's episode. <laughs> um, so I'm so excited to know a little history before we dive in. Diamond, can you tell us about this week's trinket? This week's trinket is the Mary Jane shoe. Mm, 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 so mm, mm, this mm. is a classic. This is a classic shoe that we have seen all throughout our culture. We, I, I know, as a as a black girl, 
Now, I, I didn't have a young itty bitty black girl culture because I am a trans woman, but mm -hmm. go, growing up in the church, one of the things that I saw constantly was some like Easter Sunday, the yep. girls was in patent leather, <laughs> Mary Jane. <laughs> They made that they was ready for Easter. That's what I associate them with. It's like church clothes, Easter, Christmas. You better get the Mary Janes out. To. Yes, that just it just was a classic. But you know, throughout our culture, we have seen multiple um depictions of the Mary Jane pop up. So that's what we're talking about today. The Mary Jane shoe. Mary Janes are characterized as a closed toe, low-cut shoe with one strap across the instep. They're traditionally made out of patent leather or black leather with a button or buckle that fastens the strap. The toe traditionally is broad and round and the shoe features a low heel with thin outsoles. So let's talk about the history. Okay. This shoe originally is from the 16th century and was worn by like the establishment. It wasn't um, you know, like, you know, people who were judges, people who were in parliament, people who were, you know, people in those kind of situations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, men, men and women. Men and women. Yeah. Um, but women wasn't in power, so usually the wives, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, of this establishment. But uh -huh. usually um, the men. So, but Mary Jane's rose to popularity again during the 20th century, the 1900s, when they were originally worn by children of both sexes, but especially boys, but of both sexes. The shoes get their name from a fictional character named Mary Jane, invented by Richard Outcult. He was an American cartoonist. He was um, the creator of the Buster Brown comic strip. And he hmm. is also known as a pioneer of... Um, you know, early pioneer of comic strips. Oh, and wow. so he made this character, Buster Brown, mm -hmm. for the Brown Shoe Company. And he named one of, one of Buster Brown, the character's sidekicks is a little, you know, we love to um, sexualize little children. Mm -hmm. in, in, Why not? In, it's in American. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of his, his love interests, even though they were kids, um, his love interest was named Mary Jane. And she and him, because they are they are created in this kind of the type of character that um, Buster Brown is, is a mischievous, well-to-do boy dressed in like the little Lord Fauntleroy style, which mm, is like a spoiled, fancy. yeah, fancy, spoiled, brat, pampered kid style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, his love interest was a little girl named Mary Jane, which is not ironically, which is the, which is Richard's, the creator's real life wife's name, Mary Jane. Uh, okay. Side note, but a little history because you know I love to point out some how how racism <laughs> is ingrained in our culture as uh -huh. Americans. <laughs> so um, Richard Outcult, the one who created what we're talking about, um, he also is the is the cartoonist who made the very first depiction of black people in um, comic strips in comic strips ever. And let so, me guess that depiction is not. <laughs> Not extremely flattering or kind or true. Nope, it is not. It, oh. it is it. Most of those caricatures that you see, where black people have black face and big red mm. lips, and they're eating mm. watermelon, he is one of the first. He is the first person to create oh that God. image of that, like can the sambo that image that we are used to that is disrespectful mm -hmm. and, you know, caricatures of Black people. And at the time, they were, um, you know, it kind of depicted stereotypes of Black people being lazy, which is crazy because they was having to work in fields mm -hmm. and do all the work. <laughs> they were only people um, actually working. <laughs> only people who are actually working, <laughs> even taking care of their kids, even uh -huh. breastfeeding them. Anyway, so <laughs> lazy, uh, kind of a dunce, kind of silly, get running from ghosts, running from dogs, running for shotguns, which is, you know, kind of a slap in the face of mm -hmm. runaway slaves. Yeah. Um, and so they were one one of the characters, the, not one, the very first character was poor little Moses. He was the first, he was um, the first black newspaper comic strip character in the U.S. created by um, Richard Alcock. Um, for the New York Herald in 
hundred. So back to Mary Jane. We can't have shit. <laughs> we, we can't, can't have, have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we should title this section. We can't have, have shit. shit. <laughs> Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, so usually boys typically wore Mary Janes with knee high socks, while girls wore them with socks or pantyhose or little ruffles. Mm. Um, however, both sexes would oca- occasionally wear them alone. During the 1940s, Mary Jane shoes swept across Europe and America in popularity. They grew um, and became one of the most popular shoes for women. Mm. Today, Mary Jane shoes adhere to their original construction with the strap and the insect. Mm -hmm. Um, It's an iconic style, Um, you know, but they're kind of different modern versions, which we'll talk about um, later that have popped up. Times we have seen in our culture, in American culture, um, Mary Jane's pop up. The iconic Shirley Temple, Mm. she she wore Mary Jane's in um, when she was dancing as... um, you know, so that's in, why when I think of Mary Jane's, I think of tap shoes because yes. of Shirley Temple, I guess. Shirley Temple, okay. absolutely. Hmm. In one of her in one of her movies, she was tap dancing in Mary Jane's. Another time in the 60s, Twiggy. One of the things that made Twiggy popular is that she not only was those lashes, her mm-hmm. amazing lashes that was yeah. a signature for her, um, that kind of mod cut black cut crease. In mm-hmm. the eyelash, but also her Mary Jane's. Wow, yeah. Um, and that's something that's that we've seen. Mm-hmm. It, the designer Mary Quant put Twiggy in a pair of Mary Jane's. That was the person who put her in it, and it mm-hmm. became a fashion staple for her. I also feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like they were semi popular in the 20s. Like you could pa- people would pair them with like flapper dresses. Sometimes. Yes. Okay. Common pairing was in the 20s was flapper dresses. So if you see 20s fashion flapper fashion but the difference in that this is when they incorporated instead of having the round toe they Mm. incorporated the pointed toe mary james trying to change it around a little bit trying to change it up you know that's what we do in fashion make it make it modern take the old shit and make it modern (laughs) and that led it from being a children's staple to women's staple gotcha okay so (laughs) instead of it just being a kid thing girls women and girls are wearing it Also, we have seen Christopher Robin in Winnie the Pooh. Early depiction of Christopher Robin was in those Mary Janes. We we saw them. We see them um, um, in in all the characters, the early depiction. Once we kind of went further in time, it kind of shifted to like a red sneaker. Mm -hmm. But the early depiction, because it was in vogue, was um him in a, a little boy in those um mary james there were in vogue and then i also feel like it it like conjures this image of like innocence and like sweetness and little delicateness kid. i feel like yeah little kid that makes sense we see um two popular children of royalty so when we see Di- princess die and mm-hmm. Princess William and Princess Harry, they have mm-hmm. on Mary Jane's when we wow. first see them. Uh-huh. When we first see, um, who else? Um, JFK's kids, mm-hmm. they have on Mary Jane's. Oh, at the funeral. Yes. Mm-hmm. They have on Mary Jane's. Um, nowadays, to, in conclusion, nowadays we see a slight entry in this type of shoes being worn by men again. Mm-hmm. recently we posted um us because we like to post uh, modern stuff here at chasing threads we posted tyler the creator wearing a pair of doc martin's versions of the classic mary james we yeah. posted him on our instagram um mm-hmm. telfar has their own version of mary james converse um men are coming back they've been on the runway wearing more masculinized mary james and oh, so yeah. You know, yeah, I think that's dope. That's what I've been seeing. And that's, yeah, I think it's sickening. I love that. I think they're really cool. Specifically, the Tyler, the creator one sticks out in my mind because I feel like he does it in such a cool, his style is always pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, And his cakes. Did you see that? Did you see that picture of him all caked up? Okay. um, It was his sexy Sexy red. red. Yeah. I was like, oh, when 
When Tyler get a BBL? Yeah, when, <laughs> and then everyone was like, oh, I know his man's loving that. And they were like, oh, he's not gay. He's had a girlfriend for like six years since she was like 19. And I was like, pew, 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 blowing my mind in like 10 different ways. Yeah, because um, he loves to play with the I'm gay situation. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, yeah. Well, he's walking the low in his Mary, walking the line in his Mary Jane. Yes, <laughs> and I live, I live, I live, I live, I live. So that has been our trinket for this week: the history of Mary Janes. And you know, I hope y'all do a deep dive into them so y'all can learn even more than I did. But it was a interesting, you know, other than racist stuff, it was an interesting. Um, even that was kind of interesting because I love to see how it yeah. ingrains into our culture and how we kind of look past things. Because, you know, in 2008, that cartoonist got inducted into the comic hall of fame because being a pioneer, yeah. oh my mm-hmm, God. being a pioneer based on what he did. A with pioneer? A pioneer Ugh. because technically... You know that makes, I just got chill <laughs> Oh, God. Exactly. Technically with Buster Brown and with... um. You know, he had a couple of them. There was a, another racist one called The Yellow Kid. <laughs> the Yellow Kid. And oh um, most of his stuff was racist, but Buster Brown was not racist. It was more about <sighs> kids and about the shoe selling. But luckily, he got played out of that. The The Brown Shoe Company, um, he tried to sue them and f- to get his publishing rights for uh-huh. it, and they won, and he didn't get any money for, um, for it. So they were playing him and he's one of the first people to kind of go after artists. Right. So he is also, um, kind of, they shine a light on him being somebody who's fighting, who has, uh-huh. as a pioneer in fighting for publishing rights, even though he lost. Yeah. Eh, so it's an ugly, it's a bittersweet situation. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, as usual, thanks for the history. Um, thanks for the, we can't have shit. And <laughs> I- I'm about to go shopping for some Mary Janes now. Well, <laughs> So, all right, Chance, this top, the, the topic for this week has been inspired <laughs> by some, some internet, mess. Some <laughs> mess. internet shenanigans. <laughs> internet shenanigans like I have never seen before. <laughs> People well, I on follow Twitter, internet shenanigans, so I, 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 I love it. You're like, this is old news. This is old uh, news. I just feel like on these day, these days on TikTok and on Twitter, People be telling stories that I would take to my grave. Like, you could not torture some of these stories out of me. And these people just tell them, like, it's nothing. No big deal. Here's my, here's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Here's some laughs for you. As somebody who is that person who tells all my business, (laughs) is some, what it is, well, for me, what it is, is, I mean, I've always felt like this. If I tell you, it can't embarrass me. Like if you, if somebody try to throw something in my face about anything that has ever happened to me, you can't because I've already talked about it. I've already put it out there. So there's no, there's nothing that can make me feel embarrassed. So yeah. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to shame me, but bitch, I already told that in episode blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Go back to the video on YouTube in 2012. And if bitch. I haven't told it yet, wait for the memoir because it's coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a girl on TikTok. And she... Okay, so I'm going to tell her story. <laughs> try to do the amended version of her story. Uh-huh. You can find it. It's been going viral for the past couple of months. Search for... Um, this nigga stole my tabby shoes. <laughs> so <laughs> this girl was walking down the street and she see this fine dude. They make eye contact. They looking cute and sexy. And he was other. fine. He and was he's fine. cute. She's cute. They like, oh, well, they looking at each other. And, you know, they just walk past. They don't stop and talk, but they walk past. Next thing she knows, she get a message on Tinder. And he was like, didn't I see you downtown today? And she was like, what? You was that dude that walked past that was looking all cute? And he was like, yeah, and you was looking all cute too. Damn, you fine in person. Bam, 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 bam. So they decided to meet up. Okay. So when they meet up, they go out to little eat, meet at a little spot, mm-hmm. and the vibes is right. She was like, 
mm, he looking like a snack. The <laughs> vibes is right. We talked a little bit on Tinder. So now in person, the vibes are right. Let me be a grown woman about it and take him back to the apartment and rock his world. She said, let me give him a piece. Just a little piece. Give him piece. a piece. Just a little taste. <laughs> let me see what it's giving. See what the dick is about. <laughs> Bam. And so she take him back to the house like grown women do, single mm-hmm. grown women do. Queen. And she let him have it. Get Put the coochie on him. He put the dick on her. And it mm. was so good, he spent the night, and the next morning, they fucked again. Yeah. Bam. So, <laughs> one of the things that they had in common is that they like fashion. Mm-hmm. And they talked about fashion. So she was telling him about her purse collection, her clothing collection and her shoe, shoe collection. So right next to the bed that they just got done fucking on, mm-hmm. she has a little rack of shoes. And a couple of the pair of shoes are Mason Margella tabby shoes, some mm-hmm. boots and some Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. And so the unique thing about Mason's, they look like a camel hooves. foot. <laughs> a hooves. Very that very a much ca- that. A camel foot, a hooves. It's like some little leather in between your toes. They your are unmistakable. Toe. Unmistakable. They're very common. Personally, I think they're ugly as hell. But thank you so much. I feel, <laughs> I think the same thing. Thank you. I think they're ugly. But the ones that I saw, I was like, oh, these ugly ass shoes, bitch. I would you you wouldn't be able to tell me to get on TikTok and tell a story about these ugly ass shoes. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, why you, he should have stole them. He did you a Literally, favor. you would have been like, hey baby, you said you like them shoes. You want to take them on the way out? Get them off my hands for me. <laughs> exactly. So, but when I, when I, cause I'm nosy <laughs> and I love to be in folks' business. So I like people to tell their stories. No, you're a me. journalist. That's right. what it is. You're an investigative <laughs> journalist. <laughs> I went to see how much the shoes cost. And when you go to Mason Margiela's um, um, page, mm-hmm. there's so much more styles of the shoes. Oh, yeah, and sure. there are some of them that I really like. I was yeah. like, oh, the ones she had, these are hideous. But the ones <laughs> I saw on the um, the boots, the little, um, ooh, the little short boots, short black boots, them things oh. are ugly. But mm-hmm. there's a couple of them. I'm like, oh, these are kind of cute. I would get these. Now, yeah. They're not cute enough for me to pay that kind of price because they range from, I think the lowest was like four eighty, yeah. and the highest that I saw was like sixteen hundred, a little, mm. a little bit maybe like eighteen hundred. So they kind of mm. range in this kind of in the in this kind of high. They're high end, and so I was like, oh, they're not cute enough for me to spend that kind yeah, of money. No. Now I'm a fashion girly, so you know I got bags that cost a lot of money. Yeah. I got shoes that cost a lot of money when I can find them that can in my size. Yeah. But you know. I, I, you know, I'm not somebody who's like, oh, I'm not spending that money on something. I'm not that person. Yeah. But, um, but it has to be something that I love and I'm going to mm-hmm. get a lot of wear out of if I'm spending that much money. Yeah. And so I was like, child, I don't, I, her version, I was like, this is ugly. But okay. <laughs> I went and looked it up and I'm going to go, go back to her story. So then she put a part two up. And so she comes back and she's telling about how this dude, <laughs> Asked her to use her phone to look up a playlist on her phone. And instead of looking up a playlist, he deletes his number on her phone. <laughs> that is so fucking funny <laughs> to me. <laughs> deletes his number on her phone. You know, the number where they had to call each other to uh-huh. hook up. <laughs> deletes his number on her phone and steals her <laughs> designer shoes. Uh-huh. And this bitch said she didn't notice they were gone until she was about to record a video, about to tell the masses how good this dick was, mm-hmm. how good. Oh, I met this dude from Tinder last night, and, and he rocked my world. Pussy was throbbing. Oh, my God, this was fire. <laughs> and then she said she was looking at the camera, and all of a sudden, now y'all know I'm embellishing. Just, I'm giving, I'm, for the, for the sake of flare. entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was looking in the camera. And, and she looked in the shelf in the back of in the corner of her camera lens and she said, damn, something's not right. <laughs> something's motherfucking missing. He blowing her back what? out the whole time. He looking at the shoes thinking, bitch, can I fit those in my bag? 
Dude, what size are those? And I whole picked time. up what size was her? What can I fit them in my bag? And did you what was you thinking about it as you laid there after nothing or while you were stroking? Mm -hmm. And which one's worse? <laughs> which is worse? Oh my god. So she looked back there on the shelf and her shoes, her <laughs> tabby Mary Janes are gone. Mm -hmm. And so she's devastated. Where the fuck is my <laughs> shoes? She knows she ain't been nowhere and they was there because she showed him. So nigga, you had to steal them. And, and so he she already said he wanted them. Like yeah, Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He had already <laughs> said he wanted them and blah, 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 blah. So she goes to her phone to try to call him like, nigga, uh, <laughs> where the fuck is my shoes? What the fuck is going on? If what you bring them happening? back quickly, I might give you a little pussy again. Come on now. Maybe. maybe <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but what's going on? I need uh -huh. my shoes. She got to her phone. Nigga number gone. Because <laughs> he done deleted it. <laughs> deleted and she the shit. She realized, oh, I have been heisted. <laughs> I was not just got by a regular motherfucker. I oh was heisted. There was, there, was a, there was a thought to his madness. <laughs> Oh my God. So she goes to the internet and <laughs> we all know that the best detectives in the world are on the internet. They mm -hmm. gonna find out something. They so, said, we gonna free Brittany and we gonna find these tabbies. Don't exactly, you worry. <laughs> exactly. So she put it out. The video started going viral. Some chick hit her up and say, oh my God, girl, <laughs> I know him. That's my L girl. after L after L after L. L, L. L, L. <laughs> Oh my God, girl! I know him. He's my homegirl's boyfriend, <laughs> and he just gifted her them shoes. Look at this picture, and the girl <laughs> sent her the picture of the the girlfriend in her shoes, <laughs> looking cute and happy. She's like, "This, I, my man got me some tabby Margellas. Like, I'm about to step to the thrift store looking hot. This man, right. she has I love it. him. First of all, in my mind, I'm like." Ain't no way a nigga gonna give me some used um, designer mm -hmm. shoes. Mm -hmm. Shoe, man, you might can give me a used designer bag. You mm -hmm. might can play me like, oh, I was at this thrift store. I know you like this brand and look yep. at the quality. I picked it up for you. Here you go, baby. I could have <laughs> that could have been I, a bag, but some shoes. I don't know if I'm sticking my feet in some shoes. No, that's yeah, that's just not really my ministry. And so <laughs> if I see it, if I see them all scuffed up over the bottom. I have, I'm gonna have questions. Uh -huh. I might put yeah. them up on the real real. I might, mm. put, I, but I'm not gonna keep them. You're not yeah, gonna see me. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. I don't know what he told her. This is a, a present from my boo, so I just <laughs> I just showed him and put it in the group chat. And unfortunately, my homegirl in the group <laughs> chat knew this to follow this bitch. <laughs> Where is the loyalty? There's not no loyalty in this story. <laughs> and so she sent her the picture. And then so she saved the picture and sent it to the dude. Because they found she found a number. Everybody found a number. <clears throat> she found his page, even though he had blocked her on the on the unmatched her and blocked her on Tinder. She found the his name is Joshua. So she sent the picture. She she confronts him, like, nigga, why are you still my fucking shoes? <laughs> And he was no, like, but before the picture, he was like, no, no, I, no. what are you talking about? You're crazy. I'll pay you for them, though, if it's that serious. But which is crazy, no, which is so you want to pay. You want to <laughs> pay somebody for some shoes that you didn't steal. Child, exactly. Get out of Goodbye. here. So she said, nigga, yeah, right. Let me see the picture of your girlfriend in my shoes. <laughs> and she <laughs> sent she sent nothing but the picture. No caption. Nothing. Yes. She said receipt in the receipt. Period. In period. And he's like. <laughs> Damn, you got me. <laughs> I, you got me. That is so fucking funny, Diamond. That is wild and crazy. Oh my God. I just, <laughs> it, it, I'm flabbergasted. Like, uh, yes. It is what, so it, funny. Th 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 you can't make this shit up. <laughs> so, this need to be a short film. So, <laughs> or like an episode of Insecure or something yeah, at something. the very least. So, he tells her, damn, all right. And she, he tells her, I'm going to bring you your shoes back. I'm going to get your shoes and bring you your shoes back. And so, of course, she recorded him returning her shoes back. He only is doing this because he wants her to take the video down because it has exactly. gone viral. Yeah. And so he like, all right, I'm going to bring your shoes. She said he was laughing the whole time. 
and she posted that video too. Smart girl. I would have yeah. posted. I'm not taking shit down. You stole no, my shit. I'm gonna not. you're gonna be yeah. embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show your video, I'm gonna show your picture, I'm gonna show everything. Yeah. And so we <laughs> wanted to talk about <laughs> because of this story. We Ooh. thought it would be interesting to come back to Chasing Threads. Shout out to my girl, Janicia, who was like, y'all need to cover this. <laughs> <on Threads." laughs> and I was like, yeah, let me get a chance, see what he doing. You said, we got to get on the mic stat. <laughs> <laughs> and so we wanted to, since this is a, a cultural phenomenon happening right now on yep. Twitter. Well, X, you know. Oh, Elon God. Musk, don't dead name, please. Please <laughs> don't don't name them, please. Please don't dead name them. <laughs> He wants to dead name everybody else, but not fucking Twitter. <laughs> Goodbye. So, yeah. So we are now on. It is now blowing up on Twitter. She luckily got her shoes back. So we wanted mm -hmm. to talk about the brand who created these amazing yeah. shoes, which is the seed of this amazing cultural moment. We just wanted to take a little bitty look and see why the hell. What is worth stealing them? What's worth posting this, posting the story? There must be something here that y'all are up in arms about. So I did a little <laughs> bit of research on Margella and I just want to let y'all know about it. Belgian designer Martin Margella founded the label in 1988 in Paris after studying at the influential Antwerp Royal Academy and then joining the team as Jean-Paul Gaultier as an assistant designer. So this was at the time when Jean-Paul Gaultier was doing the Madonna like cone bras and all of those like over the top Oh, avant-garde like performance looks um that's right. really where martin margella got his start in the fashion industry um, and armed with this training that he had learned from school and from jean paul gautier and he had a lot of inspirations from japanese avant-gardists like ray ray kawakubo who was the creative director of comme des garçons so all of that mixed together was in his mind when he launched his eponymous brand uh martin margella in 1988. Margella, after launching the label, was instantly recognized for its ideas of nonconformity and subversion of norms, which even today, looking at these tabby boots, like we talked about, it ain't conforming to nothing, and there are no norms there. <laughs> it's a little bit wild. Conforming to um, the devil's foot. <laughs> period. It's getting cloven hooves. <laughs> Despite being responsible for some of fashion's most extreme statements, including these boots and a jacket made of pin lids or clothes sprayed with mold, or at one point he did cardigans made out of trash bags. Um, the label's overall aesthetic has been popular with both like high street retail people, um, as well as other contemporary designers who have taken these aesthetics on and, and have run with them. Ideas such as like wonky hymns and exaggerated volumes, experiments with masculine feminine tailoring and exposed stitching are all central to Margiela and have been particularly influ influential across the fashion spectrum. So he really helped lead this new, like changing of silhouettes and deconstructing in the late 80s and early 90s. And we've really seen that explode amongst so many designers since then. Um, Martin Margiela, the man, made it a point to let his clothes speak for themselves, which is another really interesting thing about him to me <laughs> and is a juxtaposition to this girl who's putting all her business on TikTok. Um, in contrast to the star designer behavior of his peers and the other designers of the time, Margiela created an enigmatic persona for himself where he was never photographed. He didn't take the like traditional catwalk bow at the end of the show. Um, and he only gave his interviews via fax, which is the funniest fact to me. Just imagine him beeping in on some hold paper on the sides with his answers on a fax machine is so funny. But in addition to being enigmatic, he was also extremely creative and prolific. Um, unfazed by the demand and pressure of running his own label, Martin also designed the women's collections at Hermes between 1997 and 2003. So his thumbprint is very strongly felt amongst a lot of luxury brands of this time, which is exciting. He was never afraid to bring a risk factor into fashion, which is where we're going to talk a little bit about the polarizing tabby toe boot. Um, it made its first runway debut in Margiela's spring summer 89 runway show. So it's been around for a minute, like we talked about. It's, it's having this weird resurgence now, but these weird toe boots have actually been around for a lot longer than I had realized. Um, and they were inspired by 15th century Japan, where wooden platform sandals 
uh, with a strap in between the toe to make it feel more stable. Um, we're worn uh, with a footwear of choice for field workers in Japan, actually, which is very interesting. Um, and versions of this boot are still worn today in the Japanese countryside by workers, farmers, gardeners, soldiers, which is so funny to me to imagine them like marching the front lines in these cloven hoof boots or working in the fields with these big old crazy tabby boots on. That's just such a funny concept to me. I know it's not I the had same. I as... those in the 90s. Did you? I had of the pair, like um, Japanese ones? The Japanese shoes with the um, thong in the middle of your toe. They so were, were they so cool. No. <laughs> okay. yeah, I didn't. But think they so. looked dope. They got you a lot of attention, but yeah. they were not. Um, they were they were very geisha shoes for me. Um, yeah. but <laughs> they were dope. They yeah. were dope. But it is. And- I I think that's one thing about his. Well, not the clothing specifically, but like his shoes. They still do a lot with shoes. Um, a lot of their stuff is meant to make like a a statement visually more so than being concerned with being comfortable and wearable which as we know is typically the case with haute couture brands but um it's just interesting to think about with him um and from from the like gardeners and soldiers and workers to the front pages margella is also known for dressing a-list celebrities like on the regular the brand has been featured on the front of editorial magazines and continues to make headlines for its unconventional runway collections uh, some of my personal favorite and most memorable Margella celebrity A-list moments are, I'm sure you remember this, but during Kanye West's Yeezus era, his entire tour wardrobe was actually designed by Macy Margella. Um, at this point, Martin had left the brand already, but the house itself was working on all of Kanye's um, designs for that show, which are some of his, in my mind, some of the most memorable Kanye looks where he has those bejeweled masks, like completely covering his face. Um, and the really cool, like, deconstructed looks that he started wearing that, like I said, in my mind, I really heavily associate with Kanye. And I actually think was a, a starting point in his own design journey as far as Yeezy and the way that Yeezy ended up looking, I think, was heavily inspired by which is, Margiela. Which is when, this is after John Galliano took over the brand. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually, one thing I found interesting was Kanye talked a little bit about these face masks that he wore during this era. Um, And he said that he was drawn to these masks after consistently being told he wasn't welcome in high fashion spaces, which we've talked about here before. We know Kanye has a longstanding feud with the powers of B when it comes to high fashion and not wanting to let him as a Black music maker into those spaces. Um, And he said that he was told, stay in your place, sit in the front row of that show and wear this jacket I made you. Stay in your place. Do what you get paid to do. Stay in your place. Don't embarrass yourself trying to chase your dreams. Save face. Save face. He said, that's why I've got this fucking mask on because I ain't worried about saving face. Fuck face. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting manifestation of that there. Um, Another one of my favorite Margiela culture celebrity moments. I know we're going to agree on this one is in the 2018 Met Gala, where the theme was Heavenly Bodies. Our Lord and Savior Rihanna wore head-to-toe Mason Margiela look that was this encrusted, bejeweled Pope Pope. outfit. Oh, A serve. A serve for the ages. Ain't nobody done motherfucking the Met Gala like that, child. Except for her. (laughs) Again, when she did the yellow. She Rihanna is consistently the Met Gala girl, and to uh-huh. me, to me, pardon me, this is her number one most Facts. like impactful look when I think about it. Um, it's I just think so about cool. the, the the mustard yellow um, um, kind of with a long train, long royal train, yeah. yeah. But the Pope one is the one for me. Yeah, yeah, it's sickening. It was again inspired by the Pope, and it took two hundred and fifty hours to create. Followed by 500 hours of hand sewing crystals to make this custom look. So we gagged for it and they knew we were going to because of how how insane it was. Um, speaking of his couture line, the label is not only known for its creative and androgynous designs. It's also super well known for its legacy in haute couture, holding the official haute couture appellation from the Fédération Française de la Couture, which I guess is like, if you are haute couture, you're going to be in our... We're going to say it to you. You, We decide for you, not you. Um, and they have held that um, that position since 2012. 
under the Mesa Margiela artisanal name, which is what they call their, their Hokator line. But in some more recent news, uh, culture and celebs aside, Mesa Margiela announced its first ever high street collaboration with fast fashion giant H&M in 2012, um, which brought together like fashion nerds who loved Mesa Margiela, uh, hype beasts who wanted a minute of the culture, um, and artsy IT types who were typically known to wear his clothing. Uh, this capsule collection saw the brand take archive pieces and revive them for a more commercial audience look without losing that Margiela interesting edge. Um, it was widely acclaimed by most fashion critics, although some naysayers bemoaned the timing of the collab as it came out three years after Martin Mar Margiela stepped down from the label. Like we talked about, he eventually stepped down. He stepped down in 2009, actually, and they didn't announce a successor to the fashion house. They just had in-house designers kind of take over and they elongated that legacy of secrecy and not kind of knowing what was going on there. So they never revealed who they were. Um, and it stayed that way until 2014 when British couturier Jean Galliano was hired as creative director. Um, we all know Galliano. He's had his own brand. He's been creative director for many other fashion houses. He himself is a polarizing, interesting figure in contemporary fashion. Um, and since taking the reins, Galliano has married his personal aesthetic with the house codes and traditions, expanding on that vocabulary of glamour, couture, and rebellion, which has cemented the house's position as a singular and autonomous entity in the realm of luxury. Which brings us to today. Wait, 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 let me be messy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm listening, I'm listening. Let me be messy a little bit. So let's talk about John Galliano. So prior to him getting hired in 2014, um at this at this house mm -hmm. he was this is pre or post nazi comments this is this this is that okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> i knew it was coming but prior to that he was the lead gig at christian dior john mm -hmm. galliano worked at christian dior yep. and so he is known for being like this fashion industry bad boy flamboyant um creative genius of course um and so, you know, but he's also uh, anti-Semite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so in 2011, Galliano was caught on video spewing anti-Semitic slurs in which he said he loved Hitler. Um, he told a group of people, people like you would be dead today. Ugh. Your mothers, your fathers, they all would be gassed. So. Real weird shit. Just real asshole anti-Jew stuff. And which makes sense that he would connect with Kanye West, who later goes on to have anti-Semitic, <laughs> anti-Jew ramblings. Yeah. ramblings. Because of this bullshit, after the scandal, um, Galeona kind of vanished from the fashion scene, but he was convicted in France for this anti-Semitic behavior and got mm -hmm. fired from Christian Dior because of that foolishness. Oh, um, because they can uh, prosecute hate speech there? Yes, they can prosecute... Mm -hmm. Oh, must be nice. I know. Um, imagine. Imagine. <laughs> um, we could uh, convict our presidents. But <laughs> luckily, we are trying to do that yeah, now. We're in the um, process. You know, our ex-president, um, <laughs> luckily for that, too. Yeah. Um, following um, Galliano's conviction, he went to rehab for alcoholism. You know, they always go act like mm -hmm. it was something. It was drugs. It was alcohol. They're having the uh, image is what they're uh -huh, doing. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, in 2013, this is prior to him being added on to um, Margiela. Ma Margiela. He admitted that he was a racist during an interview with Vanity <laughs> Fair. The same year, Galliano stepped up, <laughs> stepped out in a look that mirrored the Hasidic Jews. I know they do the um, with the little ringlets and with the, the little ringlets and the, and the yeah. round fur hat. You know, my homegirls told me not to do this, but I really wanted a red version of that that had like a red fur. I mean, couldn't round. you just say, yeah, it was like a fur, like uh, Dr. Zhivago, but in red moment? Like, that's what I, it deserved. I live, but that was just that don't wear your hair curly. That, right? I wasn't going to do the swirls, <laughs> but I wanted that hat. But yeah. they was like, bitch, stop. <laughs> so I listened to my friend. <laughs> Um, but he came out donning a Hasidic Jew top hat, a black suit, and long curly hair. That res the resemblance was unmistakable. Yeah. And they, for him to be anti-Jew and come with that, you know, it's a spit in their face. Mm -hmm. But 
because of his talent and because of white supremacy, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he can go on to be the leader of this fashion house and go on about this new, you know, cutting edge fashion house. Not new, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get another job and not, oh, yeah. be, not be quote unquote canceled because, you know, that's just what it is. He ain't Chris oh, yeah. and Michelle. <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> I also think that is this is a great topic for another Chasing Threads episode, but I think that there is something to be said about fashion, particularly high fashion, that allows racist a lot of people, racism. but especially men to racist men, abusers to misogynists, misogynist, to continue to move in those circles without being challenged, uh, without losing their jobs. I mean, look at like Alexander Wang, who has been credibly accused many many times of sexual assault by many many people mm-hmm. and it's no one talks about it it just then you move on from it yeah. you think about like someone like terry richardson the fashion photographer who got away with sexually assaulting people for years because he was so respected and people loved his work mm-hmm. um yeah it, it drained the swamp in the fashion industry if, if is what we need to be doing actually Facts. so yes i wanted to point out that this the person who is over this fashion house now is a fucking dickhead. Yeah. A racist anti-Semite that, you know, yeah. You know how else is a good example of that, of even after their death being heralded is Karl Lagerfeld. I feel like people, people love him so much and he was so talented that it's like they forgive everything he ever said or did. And even when he like died, people were like, oh, well, he, called people fat and he was horribly racist and rude but look at these beautiful dresses mm-hmm. beautiful gowns mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah i hate that classic <laughs> i wonder if tiktok girl knows or cares that john galliano is a weirdo racist i mean she's probably a fashion not. girly she you don't think probably not i i own i own some you know i own some product shit and we know they're fat phobic and racist yeah. um when when Naomi was Naomi and um what is um God what's the Beth Ann um Hartson when they were doing that campaign about it needs to be more people of color on the runway and they were mm-hmm. calling it out and the the woman over Prada was like mm, I don't like where y'all going with this I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just put nothing but white models and y'all yeah. fuck y'all fuck what y'all talking about fuck y'all to what y'all talking about diversity from Prada yeah. put nothing but white models and so I do she said, it's a no for me I don't yeah. own a I don't own a lot of Prada I think I, own, I think I own like two pieces I think I own um uh a purse and some glasses but um I don't know I want I don't want to say I don't care about racism um <laughs> Well, I think that fashion, there is a very, I I feel like I say this before every statement, but there's a very interesting conversation to be had about how in fashion, there is a similar thing where with music, this, this might be too much. So feel free to cut it out if so. But like you mentioned Michael Jackson earlier, this concept of R. Kelly, Chris Brown, even it's like, yeah. Can Azalea Banks, can you separate, separate the art from the artist? And does that does that conversation carry over to fashion i believe it does do we give more leeway in terms of fashion because you don't as a consumer you don't necessarily feel as connected to those creators as you do with music um so yeah i think that's really something really I think it's a, it's a personal people. it's a personal your own personal thing um i have deleted all of r kelly's music out of my rotation yeah. Yeah. i have not deleted all of chris brown's mm. um I have not, I'm trying to think of other things that I'm kind of like, um, all the movies that were created under like a Weinstein. There's some yeah. movies that I really still love that I'm yeah. like, I love um, Shakespeare in Love. I love mm-hmm. that, um, that I'll still watch. Um, Cosby Show, I still watch Cosby Show. I won't yeah. support him now, but I guess is that supporting him? I don't know. It's I don't know what that, how that streaming shit looks like, but yeah. Um, I've watched Cosby Show, like YouTube episodes of Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. I try not to watch it on um like a streaming service, but I watch YouTube episodes about it. Yeah. Um Yeah, one of my personal like the way uh, I can relate guilty to this, pleasures. Yeah, almost like guilty pleasures. For me, it's unfortunately it's Harry Potter. Like 
Yes. I don't engage with that content Facts. anymore. Like I don't play the new game. I don't, I will not engage with it until the bitch is dead. Um, however, that is such an important part of who, of, of my growing up process. And I can imagine that's what like the Cosby show is for Same. certain people. The thriller al al album is for people. Um, you know, like they said with R. Kelly, like step in the name of love is played at every celebration ever. It's like mm -hmm. these things are so integral to who we are as people. And I'm not saying anything revolutionary, but mm -hmm. um, it, it's yeah, it can be hard. And and I've I guess I've never really thought about it, honestly, with fashion until <laughs> until this conversation. Um, and yeah, that's I can't for people to reckon with. Uh, it's it's hard to do that because I'm like that with um, Harry Potter too but I watch Harry Potter every long flight that I have because I can yeah. gauge how much time I have on this flight mm. by I'm on Harry Potter 1, 2, 3 yeah. I can gauge how long I'm going to get to that so I do that all the time and I enjoy it and I think there's always a it's hard to explain it, I'm not saying that it justifies anything but you know, I love that the actors on Harry Potter, the the key ones, have yeah. spoken out against disavowed her, um, yeah. disavowed her, and spoken out against her. So that also makes it I don't want to say okay, but it makes me comfortable watching them act and do do that work. Um, as far I as I also fashion, think that it to me in the Harry Potter world of it, and <laughs> this isn't Marsha's play, but in the Harry Potter world of it, it's like to me as trans people specifically trans women who she has her biggest beef with it is your choice and your right to decide whether or not you want to engage with it, it right. like do you know what i mean and for anyone to tell you specifically a cis person to tell you that you cannot engage with it because that makes you a bad trans person or a bad ally it's like shut the fuck up like leave me alone and then i think some of the lessons that i learned in harry potter transcend her rhetoric like Absolutely. I think there are some the, the inclusive message in Harry Potter is really dope and the class lessons in Harry Potter is really dope. I think I think yeah, I think that the lessons that kids learn watching that, I just think it's it transcends the bullshit that she's talking about. Yeah, um, I agree. And also sometimes I just don't know. Like uh, sometimes I'll buy something. Like I said, I got a pair of glasses and I got a, a purse. That perch was so fucking me that I can't, I just saw it and was like, oh, I'm getting that because that mm -hmm. is my type of bag. And it was so me. And and also, I didn't buy it from them. I bought it from a consignment place. And so Which it I think wasn't makes a like, huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And yeah. so um, other than me promoting it by wearing it, but it also isn't one of those. I don't like those things where you can tell what this bag is from. Like I yeah, can't. No, no, no. I don't like bags that are like, oh my god, monogram. Gucci, monogram, Gucci, monogram. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Yeah. yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> and so my Prada bag, most people don't know. They just like, oh my god, who created, who made that bag? And I have to tell them. They can't tell it. And so now my glasses, they do have the symbol on the ends of mm -hmm. them, big white Prada triangle. And so, but they just were so dope. I had to have them. So yeah, um, I also think like not to be a Debbie Downer, but in late stage capitalism, these type of decisions are so. You know what I mean? Like again, not to say like it's not important to if you're supporting abusers try. or whatever, but yeah, like just try your fucking best, man. Like I don't know. Oof, it's hard. We all participate in capitalism. Yeah. Um, and we're all gonna support somebody um mm -hmm. that's that's done did something and so which which doesn't say oh just so don't try it all but you know it sometimes you just gotta make every we all are navigating those decisions yeah. and um for me certain things has to be more in my face for me to be like oh no i can't fuck with you so speaking of i can't fuck with you i guess the real question in this episode is he stole your shoes mm -hmm. you got them back but the dick was a 10 out of 10. Is he it coming clearly back over? was a 10 out of 10 because she fucked him twice. She fucked him twice. the next morning. <laughs> so it clearly was some good enough dick. I don't know if it was a 10, but at least an 8, 9 for you to get back up on it. I don't know. I might invite him back over because I don't know that I would wear the shoes again after the girlfriend wore them anyway. I would be mad, but I think I would have at least one more like angry session in me. No. <laughs> no, that is that's not my ministry. When you steal from me, I want to twirl you. First, I told my homegirls, I said these shoes are 
expensive. These shoes oh, like yeah. a G. Mm-hmm. We, I'm bashing you when you brought me my shoes back. I'm not. I'm not. It ain't gonna be. Oh, you just trading my shoes. I'm uh-huh. gonna have my homeboys come out the cut. You're gonna bash picture you. of him handing it over, and you're tossing the phone, and it's and boom, <laughs> right? They getting you. You you gonna learn. This is the wrong motherfucker you should have sold from because oh, you stop playing in my motherfucking face, <laughs> and just and that motherfucking. Oh man, you got me. That would have bored my motherfucking uh, yeah, pussy. Yeah. Okay. I did forget about Baby, that. Baby, it had. It would have wore me out in my spirit. And, and he's he laughing and playing and yeah, joking. Nah, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Nah, you're bad, right. my nigga. You're right. you're the door bad. is closed. I'm, yeah. I'm my gay sons is twirling you. <laughs> as soon as you hand me these shoes, <laughs> <laughs> me and them, we I'm wearing you out. Oh, but if, maybe if I was a cis girl, I probably would not. But somebody <laughs> coming and twirling you, it ain't gonna yeah. be me. Okay, I um, actually do think that is the best ending to the story. Yeah, I, I, baby, I, I, <laughs> I'm a whore, but nah. <laughs> Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I can't do oh, it. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I'm glad she got her shoes back. Um, I do hope that someone beats his ass, or at the very least, his girlfriend, A, had clean feet, and B, leaves his ass. <laughs> um, that is what I want to know. I want, now that it has gone viral, and you you the girlfriend of him, did you break up? Did you? Uh, uh-huh. What What is that? I need to update on that. I can't. Or are wait. you getting played? I know. Yes. I, by the end of the week, there w- she will have a TikTok video. She's probably gonna have an Instagram series. They're gonna link up, start a podcast together. Like we haven't. <laughs> I don't think we've I seen the it. end of this. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. I live. The tabby maybe girls. next time. Yeah. Maybe next time there'll be guests, and we can have a a mediation between the three parties. <laughs> exactly. So this blew up a lot more than I had expected. Um, I'm pretty shook, but I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the overwhelming amount of support that I've received from a lot of people, strangers, everybody who's going to bat for me and like fighting in the comments and stuff. Like I did not expect that um, I would see such like love like this. Main things I want to address are the girlfriend they are no longer together from my knowledge um she did not know he's a menace y'all he cheated on her uh so i would appreciate if you guys like try to give her a little bit of respect and space in this like she 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 did not know that like this is not her fault i'm just simply a girl who wanted her shoes back (laughs) and to warn other girls about this sociopath Finally, all I can say about this man, the last things I can say, is that he has done shit like this before. Cannot give any more details to protect other people, but yeah, he has. So y'all tell us what y'all think. This has been Chasing Threads. May make sure that you follow us on all social media. Um, Chase Instagram, Threads, Twitter, all yes. of it, and follow our personal accounts. It's gonna yes. be Diamond Styles at mm-hmm. Diamond Styles on Instagram and Twitter, right? Yep. And Diamond I Styles am... everywhere. D I A M O N D S T Y L Z as in zebra. You said I'm a professional. I'm making it the same across <laughs> all platforms. Right. <laughs> I am mostly active on Instagram. You can find me at So Chance Was Like. Um, please give us a follow and let us know what you're interested to hear us talk about, what you're loving in fashion. Diamond is always serving looks on her Instagram, so you can get some inspiration there. <laughs> um, I'm always happy to reshare a post and give you know give some looks on there from, from other people. Um, but yeah, give us the follow. And I can't, I'm so glad to be, we're back. I'm saying it for real this time. We're back. <laughs> we're back for real. I'm in a healthy, happy place. Ah, I, you're healed. I'm healed. Thank you to the nature. Thank you to Seattle. Thank you to Diamond Style. Glad award-winning activist, actress, journalist, Diamond Mother, mentor, Diamond Styles. Boom. And we will we're gonna see y'all next time. We see y'all next time. Bye. All right. So if you like fashion and you want to see any of the looks that we discuss on this show. Follow us on Instagram, Chasing Threads Pod. We hope that you lend us an ear next time. Talk to you then. Bye bye.